Hello and welcome to Starstream Gamer channel. This time I'd like to talk about AMD Ryzen overclocking. I will divide this video in two parts. In this part I will explain how to overclock CPU cores. Next video will be about memory overclocking. Enter BIOS setup. Choose advanced mode. Go to OC or overclock tab. Overclocking Ryzen cores is pretty simple. You just need to find the highest frequency your CPU can run at and the lowest voltage you can set while achieving it. So you need to change only two parameters, CPU frequency and CPU voltage. The highest safe voltage for a long-term use for Ryzen CPUs, in the opinion of many Ryzen owners and users, is 1.35 volts. They can function at up to 1.4 volts according to AMD, but in fact, there is not much use in these additional 50 millivolts. There is one more parameter. It is called CPU Load Line Calibration or LLC. It is usually located in the additional menu. For MSI motherboards it is called Digit All Power. LLC can slightly increase CPU voltage and also stabilize it during heavy loads. Some motherboards do not have such feature at all, so it is not very important. But if your motherboard has it, you'd better use it. For starters, just choose the medium level, which is usually 4 of 8 or 5 of 10. You can increase or decrease LLC value later depending on some factors like motherboard VRM quality, number of CPU cores, etc. To perform 4-core or 6-core CPU overclocking, you will need any decent motherboard based on B350, B450 or B550 chipset equipped with a VRM heatsink. Any motherboard with X chipset can do it as well of course. If you are an owner of 8-core or even 12-core CPU and motherboard based on B350 or B450 chipset, then you should be careful, as not every mid-range motherboard can manage such a heavy load. Of course you can try to perform CPU overclocking installed in a budget motherboard with A320 or A520 chipset. But be careful, as these models typically have pretty poor VRM configuration, which is not suitable for overclocking. The best software to test CPU stability, in my opinion, is OCCT. It is very simple, free and effective, as it can easily find any CPU errors. Large dataset is the default mode, just leave it be. The only thing you need to change is instruction set. Choose AVX2, any Ryzen CPU support it. And then you just need to press start button. Keep an eye on temperatures. CPU temperature shouldn't be higher than 75 degrees Celsius. Otherwise your CPU cooler is not sufficient for overclocking. While MOS or VRM temperature should not be higher than 80 degrees Celsius. Otherwise your case airflow is not intensive enough or the VRM of your motherboard is not strong enough for this task. If you set the core frequency too high or the voltage too low, you just get black screen after some time since launching this app. It may take 1, 2 or even 6, 8 minutes for this app to find an error. If your CPU has passed 10 minute test, you are probably fine. But to be 100% sure, leave OCCT running for at least 20-25 minutes. I personally have Ryzen 5 2600. At first I tried to find the highest reasonable frequency for my CPU. Any of 2600 samples can reach 3.8 GHz. So I decided to set the CPU core frequency to 3.8 GHz at first. Voltage was set to 1.35 volts. 25 minute OCCT test was successful. Then I started to lower voltage down, one step at a time. You can skip some steps if you wish. At 1.2 volts I got black screen after 7 minutes. So the lowest voltage for my CPU functioning at 3.8 GHz is 1.2125 volts which means that with 
these settings, my CPU can work absolutely stable, performing any kind of tasks, including video rendering. I also wanted to find out what is the lowest voltage for stable CPU functioning at 3.9 GHz, and it is 1.3125 volts. I was not able to reach 4 GHz, even at 3.95 GHz, and at 1.35 volts my CPU was unstable. If you cannot reach the desired frequency with your CPU, for example 4 GHz, I would not recommend to increase voltage higher than 1.35 volts. The difference in CPU performance with additional 100 MHz is barely noticeable, while power consumption greatly increases. Cool and perfectly stable system is so much better in my opinion than a little bit faster but a lot hotter. Hope this video was helpful. What do you think about overclocking? Is it worth bothering? Good luck until next time!